he'd pick up his check and he would go nanu nanu to me. Wow. And this picture that you see right here is my two brothers, Scott and Peter, and this was down in San Diego. Let's because, put that picture up if we can. Yeah, yeah. There you go. There it is. Yeah, and that's Robin wearing the Speedos. Nice. <laughs> right nice. in the middle. And then I'm on the other Very side. Very European. Yeah. <laughs> and, uh, and he was part of our family. And he was, you know, that's the thing. It's like with Robin's death, it's not just the comedy family. It's the world. Everyone is really, every race, every genre, everyone is just mourning right now. And it just sucks, you know, yeah, that this sucks. happens. So. Yeah, and you, you knew him better than obviously any of us. Did this shock you? Were you? Did you see it coming? Were you worried this might happen? Well, I think that um, the way that everyone is, all the news is covering about how he passed away, no one thought that that would, that would happen. And that's what's so, what's so sad is, I'm so sad that Robin was hurting so much. Um, and he yeah. was so sad. Yeah. Hey, Emily, let's talk about that. He, 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 when somebody, he, when I, in my experience, when a patient hangs or attempts even hanging, that usually is a sudden, highly impulsive act of desperation to, to alleviate pain. And they're, almost, they're really in kind of an altered state. So I remember I talked to an old time psychiatrist who hypothesized they were actually psychotic in that moment. If you can just get them through that moment, they don't want to do it anymore, but they often do it. Which is why with a lot of these cases, as a psychotherapist, what we do is we coach them through what to do when you're feeling those intense, intense emotions. And, you know, I don't know they ever really felt these intense emotions until later in his life. He was suffocating them with, you know, drugs and alcohol. And what winds up happening is when we don't experience these emotions, they build up and they build up. And then yet, yeah, you're right. What happens is we wind up seeing somebody who goes down this rabbit hole of emotions very quickly and does something my impulsive. But I, I can't help but wonder if it really was impulsive because at the end of the day what he was doing was he was in so much pain so much pain that he had to go to this length to yeah. end his life yeah he, and samantha you know? yeah dr drew if it was impulsive and it did happen very quickly as you guys are speaking of what can family members even do what are the red flags if it's happening so quick yeah it, 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 it is sometimes you can't do anything this is one of the sad facts yeah. about that mac you can speak to this one of the things that really breaks my heart about addiction and about depression is sometimes even with best care and best treatment and best intentions by everybody, just like a cancer that runs out of control in spite of good treatment, brain diseases behave the same way. Brain diseases behave the same way is exactly true. And when I was, when you guys were talking, I was thinking about how when, you know, you, when you're young and, and you're, you're, you're self-medicating, whether it be depression or early childhood trauma, you're self-medicating with drugs and alcohol. And that moment comes where you go, wow, this isn't working anymore and, and I can't not use. And so then you stop and like Robin did, you get sober. But then there comes that time where the pain comes back up, the depression comes back up, the issues resurface because you've never really dealt with them. And I'm only speaking from my own point of view. I don't know about Robin, how, what he dealt with and what he didn't. But you go back to what you know, what worked in the past. Mm -hmm. And that's generally going to be for someone like me or someone, you know, drugs and alcohol. And you're, you're trying to self-medicate again and again and again, and it just doesn't work anymore. And I can't imagine the depths of, well, I actually can. I've been there, but I didn't do the final act Thank God. of despair and, and isolation that one can feel. Polly, I've got less than a minute here. Can you tell me your thoughts? You've been around so many comedians. People keep asking the question, is there something about comedians that uh, you mm -hmm. think links them to depression and substance use? Yeah, comedy is a, it's a very lonely, um, it's a lonely existence. I mean, you know, you're on stage with just you and the audience. And, you know, you, you, get, you get the love you know, from them, and you feed off of it. I mean, I, I perform in some really bizarre towns, and I travel some really weird places, but I do it because I know at the end of the day I'm going to be in front of a bunch of people that love me. And I think with comics, all the other comics, that's part of the drug, is just going out on stage and feeling that connection with people because you get to be so close with those people, but yet you're so not close with them because the second you leave that stage, they're out of your life. That's right. So it's like a it's like a, a, a sickness and a drug yeah. that a lot of comics have, and I know I have to. And Robin and all the comics watching this right now, they have you know they have that sickness and that feeling where they have to get up and touch people. And, and you yeah. mentioned a lot of people you that your list of comedians at your mom's house who are not with us anymore, and that's yeah. you know, that that's a that's a, a, a terrible indictment of of what can happen if people 
don't stay with treatment, don't take advantage of treatment. And I, I always say that what you articulated, uh, Polly, the way I say it is that you know there's these these mood problems, there's these there are these traumas, and the performing in front of an audience is a bid to fill that hole. But like you said, when you walk off the stage, the hole is still there. It's not a treatment mm. for these problems. Next up, how can we understand the death of Robin Williams, another close friend, here to help us after this.